This is a video that I've been meaning to do for ages and I'm finally getting around to doing it. So a little while back, I might have mentioned it in a few videos, I fitted a little RF transmitter to my dust extractor starter motor. It's a DOL starter and I uh, fitted this in so that it activated the coil across the across the starter, held the contacts together and then you could use the little transmitter buttons to turn the extractor on and off. Really, really handy, especially with the YouTube videos because it makes a real difference when you're talking with the extractor off to with them on and when you're the other side of the workshop you have to walk all the way over here, turn the extractor off, walk back, do what you're doing, turn it back on to do the bit of machining, it gets a bit monotonous. So fitted that system, it worked brilliantly but it broke down a few times and uh, caused me a bit of fuss. So I ended up just going back to, in the heat of a moment when I needed to just get on, going back to the original starter and uh, left it exactly how it was. So this is the starter off of my dust extractor that I just extended the wires to the inside of the workshop. And then it goes back to the extractor just as normal. So it's so straightforward. So what I looked for then was a more professional solution. And these guys have come up with what I think is going to be the best solution for a remote control dust extractor. I found this website called Tough Leads and they sell this product. It's for dust extractors, but I assume we can use this on any starter for any motor. They sell this separate box. You can buy a kit that will fit in your starter if you've got room for it, but with this box here, it puts all the gubbins of the remote start in its separate contained box, which you then join to your extractor box and uh, that will control the, remotely the starting and stopping of this extractor. And it's all programmed in and uh, safe and properly done. So this is a proper solution, not just a way of bridging the contacts within the starter across the uh, coil. I'll put a link in the description to this. Um, it's worth a read on the website, really good. I think it's about 120 quid, something like that for the, the unit. Then I've bought a few additional remote control buttons as well but uh, not really expensive for what it's gonna do for me in terms of making the videos and starting and stopping the extractor. So um, it should be a good solution. So I'm just gonna follow their fitting instructions for fitting this. I have noticed that they didn't include a gland in the kit, so I'll get in touch with them about that. Uh, but uh, I've managed to find one of my own little glands to go into the extractor. So first things first, just gotta turn the power off to the extractor itself. Oh my gosh. Ah, extractor. There isn't actually an awful lot of room to work here, so this could be interesting to try and film as well. As you can see, I've not got a lot of room in this starter box. There we go. Look at that, didn't even need to drill a hole. Apologies if it, the audio is a bit off, I've uh, had a touch of the old man flu. This is, however, my first video. I've got uh, a different microphone, I've got a lapel microphone. So you're going to have to tell me what you think, whether the audio on this one has improved. Or whether it was... Uh, I don't know if having the, the audio on the actual point of viewing was quite a good thing because it sort of gave perspective from the point of view of the camera as to where the audio was whereas with it being on a lapel you're kind of losing the the movement of the audio relative to what you're seeing on the screen this is the worst spanner right i'm not one for advocating buying expensive kit but this thing won't throw it in the bin. That is just, just disgusting. Quarter turn, and we're done. Just taking the cover off of the box. And uh, I get to use a, a tool that I bought the other day. Whenever you get a situation like this, we've got to put a screw through a deep housing. It's always a pain to find the right bit to do it. You end up using a hand screwdriver. I saw these um, in screw fix the other day. And they are, I don't know how long they are, I think they're about 100 mil. But there's a full set, one of each size, Phillips 123, Posi 123, and then flat. I think they're one mil, and then there's a four, a five, and then a one and a half by eight mil 
flat head bit in there, all in that little case, compact, bloody perfect, one of each bit. So I get to use it almost straight away, having only bought it a couple of days ago. And a painful mounting process has now become pretty nice and easy. There you go, she can sit in there quite nice, I think. For the workshop, it's always about eyeball levels. Yeah, it's bloody, I'm impressed with them bits. Coming in clutch. That's relatively pain free. Let's get that screwed back on. So I can loop this cable around from the remote control box, mark it there, and uh, strip that cable back to that position. Bang! Nice cable if you there. There we go. Beautiful. And you poke the cable through till you can see the outer sheath on the inside. Tighten up the grommet. We've got to look at our wiring diagram. Like I say, there's a link in the description with the wiring diagram and all them bits, so I won't go into too much detail on what I'm doing here. Three and four are in parallel. One, one goes to A2. All right, which one's number one? Number one is gonna go to A2. Cable two is the neutral. I've not got a neutral on that, so. All right, let's put them in there then. Number one, number two. So that in short, Y1 goes to just a permanent live. Y2 is to a neutral, so you'll need a neutral in your starter, which you'll need for the other system anyway. Wires three and four go either side of the switch. So in your start button, they go either side of that, and that goes in parallel to the current start button. So wire five is just, you disconnect one wire from the stop switch, connect it onto wire five. So I'm using a Wago. Right, in case I this up, I've taken 96 off, cut it and connected it in series. And the last wire, tighten that up. Where's me scroggy? Earth in. I didn't trip. That's always a bonus. Okay, so we're all wired in. I'll just show you what I did. So I know when I've tried to follow uh, some videos before on wiring these things in, if yours isn't exactly the same as what the person's did, and they always seem to rush the bit where you really need to pay attention on what wires go where or something. Yeah, it's really frustrating. So, I'll try and take my time on this bit. So we've got a right jumble of wires in here. It's, uh, it's pretty packed into this. There's six wires coming out the multi-core cable that is attached to this block. I've glanded that into the extractor starter switch so this is the original extractor starter switch in the wiring diagram that comes with the new unit the transmitter unit there's uh, where each wire goes so uh, wire one goes to a permanent live in the top of the starter so i've put that in here uh, wire two is for the neutral so i've way go that 
to the neutral because the neutral doesn't actually do anything on this starter this motor doesn't need a neutral so I was quite lucky in the fact that there is a neutral to this box when we wired the workshop and we, we took neutrals to every point anyway just out of uh, sort of future proofing so that saved me a lot of hassle. Wire 3 went to one side of the start switch so this module here is the start switch so that's already wired in to work with this uh, DOL starter. So you wire, you, you put wire three and wire four of the multi-core cable in a parallel series to that cur currently existing start switch. So that start switch will still work and create a circuit. And if you use the new remote starter, that will also start and create a circuit. So they're in parallel, so either of them can work at either time. Wires five and six go onto the stop switch. So my stop switch is here. It can either go uh, in the front of this uh, terminal here. So it's number 96 is the terminal on my starter. And it just goes up to the top here after the uh, start switch. So um, somewhere in that point there, it needs to go in series. So if this stop switch is pressed, it breaks the circuit. If the stop switch on the new module is pressed, it breaks the circuit as well. So if you put that in parallel, it's not gonna do anything because the other stop switch will be bypassing it. So the wiring is really, really simple. When I fired it up for the first time, the little, there's a timer module here and it's like a delay. And that was set to something like three minutes on the stop side. So the button worked perfectly, fired it straight up. I thought it were all up and running. When I pressed stop, nothing happened, but the stop switch on the front of the box worked. So I know the, or I knew the wiring in this was perfect because the stop switch was working. So sort of traced it back, opened this up, and then realized that the delay on this, which I'm not really sure why it needs a delay, on the stop side, was actually set to uh, quite a long period of time. And then obviously when I was working on it or just trying to figure out what was wrong with it, it then randomly stopped a couple of minutes later while I was uh, investigating what was wrong. So I knew something wasn't quite right. So I just wound this round back to zero and that was, that was like a half a second delay between pressing stop and the extractor turning off, which is fine. So I'll just fire it up with it all exposed so you can see. So power on, and on and off, so on, and off. So you see there's like a half a second delay between it uh, you pressing the button on the stop side and it actually turning off, which I'm not quite sure what that's all about, so I've sent them a message to ask if that's a, a normal thing or whether there's something I need to adjust again on this device. And then what's really cool about it is you've not affected the aesthetics of the exterior of this, you've not drilled holes in it or anything. And you've got the full function of everything here. It all works still exactly as it should. So on this box, you've got, if I turn it on, it'll help. On this box, you've got start and stop still. You can't start it with the button on here, but obviously it's right next to this unit. So you can start it with that one and then you can stop it all with this one again. That's got a twist lock on it. So it will need turning to reopen it. And then obviously you've got your, your button fobs to start and stop it as well. I did discover it's the same frequency as the other setup that I had that I'd put inside the box. So I've really easily managed to program these in as well. So these work exactly the same now as per the buttons that came with the device. So I think I've got six buttons now that work with the extractor system. So there we go, we're all set up. This is a pretty good solution really for if you're, if you're not that tech savvy and you want a sort of a, just a fit and forget system that's not really tampering with your original starter or altering anything anyway, you've still got full function of that whole unit. It's just uh, one cable in, you need a gland and uh, some pretty simple wiring. And you've got remote start on your extractor, so you can be saving power 
and uh, it's going to be great for me for uh, obviously speaking to the camera. Just turn the extractor off quick, say what I need to say, turn it back on again. So really, really good. And uh, hopefully coupled with the new microphone, should be having a little bit better audio quality throughout the tutorials as well.